Come on in here, girl. Come on, come on. This is uh, this is this is Jay Todd coming to you from Fremont Street in Las Vegas, and I'm in the middle of an Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> this is what's happening this week in gambling. Stay away from me. This Week in Gambling has been made possible by SBR Forum. Sports betting discussions and handicapping on all major sports leagues. Visit them at sbrforum.com. Hello, my friends, and welcome once again to This Week in Gambling. I'm your host, Jay Todd. And I know this because it says so right down there. See, it says right there, whoop, it's gone. All right, you know, it's an ex <clears throat> you know, it's an exciting time to work in the gambling industry. It's probably, probably, it's probably exciting for you players. <clears throat> Simple line, can't get it right. You know, it's an exciting time to be working in the gambling industry. It's probably exciting for you gaming enthusiasts as well. Last week, I told you about Nevada issuing the first ever online poker licenses. Now this week, Delaware becomes the first state to legalize and regulate full-blown online casino-style gambling. Yeah, although players probably won't see any action until next year. This, of course, brings up an interesting question. Will states like Delaware, who are relatively small, have the player base to support things like online poker? It won't matter with things like roulette or slots or craps where you can play against the house. But with poker, you need butts in seats. There's already been speculation that even Nevada might have to partner with other states in order to have a large enough player base. And Delaware is less than one third the size of Nevada. So even though things are moving in a positive direction, what happens when states try to pool their players together and start crossing state lines? I'll tell you what happens. A cluster screw of monumental proportions as the feds step in, put down their own regulations, and then try to take their cut with more taxes. Mm, makes your head hurt. All right, changing directions. Did you guys hear that the founder of Full Tilt Poker turned himself in to authorities in New York this week? It's true. We'll be talking about that story, plus this weekend's big UFC fight right after the break. Subscribe to our feed for curated gambling posts and videos. Visit friendfeed.com slash this week in gambling. What's up, smart? Being smart. Yep, just booked my 10th night on Hotels.com, so I get a night free. You, me, get away. Really? Where? Anywhere you want. A bed and breakfast? Bed and breakfast, check. A place by the beach? A place by awesome. Oh, you are smart. Accumulate 10 nights and get a night free. Welcome rewards from Hotels.com. Smart, so smart. Like gang sign birds. <laughs> Full Tilt Poker's founder, Ray Bittar, turned himself in to authorities in New York on Monday. He is accused of defrauding players out of millions and millions and millions of dollars. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm happy that this jerk turned himself in. Well, he's probably out on bond by now. 
jackass. But, but don't you just know how this is going to go down? He'll say he's sorry. He'll refund some of the player's money. He'll pay a nice fine to the U.S. government. And then he'll sit in some federal day camp style prison for six months to a year. Ooh, it's like if I walked out of a bank with five million dollars in cash and they caught me down the block and I said, oh gosh, I'm really sorry. Um, here's half of it back. You know, there's always more news going on than I could possibly talk about in this 10 minute program once a week. Stories like these. You can visit our news section, which also has headlines, feature stories, poker, sports betting, plus video and Vegas content by getting over to thisweekingambling.com. Once you're there, you just click on that little link right up top where it says news and information. You just click it, just click it and it takes you right into the section. Yeah. Now for a sports betting update, here's the man that puts the izzle in my fazizzle. Peter Loshak from SBR Forums. Man, you know me so well, J. Todd, so well. Anyway, uh, let's talk about what's coming up this week uh, in gambling events. Of course, Wimbledon is continuing and it winds down this week. The last rounds run through this coming Monday and the Canadian Football League started up this past weekend, but no one really cares about that. I did, though, address it in my uh, weekly sports betting chat with the headlines manager at BetDSI, and he told me that the CFL is lightly bet, but that most of the action is sharp. So he told me that it's tough to book because of that, and that they do offer CFL at DSI uh, because they have to, but they don't like to do it because, you know, it's very risky for them. And then Major League Baseball is continuing. This is the last week before the All-Star break. And as the first half winds down, the Pittsburgh Pirates have been the most profitable team to bet on so far, while the Philadelphia Phillies have been the most unprofitable team in the first half. And for starting pitchers, of course, R.A. Dickey's having his unbelievable season, and he's been the most profitable starting pitcher to bet on in the first half. While amazingly, the actual bottom three starting pitchers in all of baseball in terms of losing money betting their starts are all marquee names. Cliff Lee, Dan Harron, and Tim Linscombe, normally thought of as three of the absolute best starting pitchers in the game, are literally the three most unprofitable starting pitchers to have bet on in the first half in all of baseball at the moment. And then also coming up this weekend is UFC 148, and Anderson Silva is the featured fighter there. Silva, of course, is considered to be the best pound-for-pound -pound MMA fighter at the moment, and he's having his rematch with Chael Sonnen, and Chael Sonnen fought Silva very tough in their first match and looked like he was going to even get a win until Silva pulled out a submission in the fifth round. But despite how competitive that first fight was, the markets right now are giving Silva about a 71% chance to win again, and I've already done an interview with a professional MMA odds maker at SBR about this fight, where he said that he thinks Silva should be an even bigger favorite, even though he liked Sonnen in the first fight. So it's interesting. We'll be covering and discussing that fight all week long at SBR. And then, of course, the World Series of Poker has started, and the main event starts on July 7th. And there are a number of props uh, on the World Series of Poker that sportsbooks are offering. A lot of them give you a pool of poker pros where you can bet on which one will last the longest, and they also offer props on the age and nationality of the eventual winner as well. Right now, Pinnacle is offering odds that there's a 56.5% chance that the winner of the main event will be someone who was born in the United States, and about a 40% chance that the winner will be someone who was born in 1986 or later. So that's what's on tap for the upcoming week in the world of sports betting. Jay Todd, back to you. I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you to everyone out there for watching This Week in Gambling. And secondly, it's not often you see a, a block of cheese and a, a tomato walking down the street together. Dudes, wait, wait they, this is supposed to be intimidating? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hold on a minute. You're not a block of cheese and a tomato. You're more like something I had to have lanced on my butt once. And you, well, uh, I, I don't know you're, what are you? Block of cheese. Put it at that. A block of cheese, and you are? Angry bird, mother flower. An angry bird. <laughs> Only in Vegas, baby. See you next week. <laughs> Is that you, Chester?